Hi there, I'm Norman Holzhausen from Boating New Zealand and today we are reviewing the LaserCat 950 aluminium catamaran with twin Yamaha 300 horsepower outboards. LaserCraft has been producing aluminium runabouts from their factory in Dunedin since 1984 and although one of the smaller manufacturers in terms of volume, they have built a solid reputation for smooth riding mono hull designs in the mid-size runabout market. So when they decided to develop a somewhat larger aluminium power catamaran, it was time for a new name and a new game. LaserCats was born, and the LaserCat 950 is their first twin hull offering, available from Family Boats in Auckland. With an outboard powered catamaran configuration, based on asymmetrical hulls and a dihedral hydrofoil below the waterline, LaserCat aims to continue their reputation for a smooth riding hull, while adding the considerable benefits of a catamaran. At the same time, they have retained the merging of aluminium hulls with other materials to give the best of both worlds, the strength and rigidity of an alloy hull with the warmth and sound absorption of composite and plastic cabinetry and finishings. Key to their solution is the very latest technology in hull and foil design. The asymmetric hulls provide the same ride benefit as a mono hull, efficiently cutting through any chop or waves without the pounding that some flat bottom cats exhibit at speed. Turning is also a pleasure, with the inner surface of each hull providing a keel-like action to enable positive and tight turns with very little side slip. It also heals slightly into the turn, the same way a mono hull does reducing the sideways force that can affect passengers on some cats. The dihedral foil is another important component. Jeremy Behrens, General Manager of Lasercraft, says that the design is based on more than 20 years of experience working on hydrofoil-supported catamarans. The laser cat's foil was developed by Jeremy in collaboration with Icarus Marine Naval Architects. The dihedral shape of the foil not only provides lift to reduce the weighted surface, and hence lower the drag, but also continues to provide that lift even when the boat turns sharply. The net result is a boat that has an astonishing top speed without using significantly more fuel, and the ability to maintain that top speed through rough water or while turning. So it was with some excitement that we boarded Zambezi, the first LaserCat 950 to come off the factory floor. Finished off in a stylish deep metallic blue with bright white cabin sides, this boat was equipped as a day boat for offshore game fishing. As such, it has a massive berth in the forward cabin, as well as a modest galley and the all-important flush toilet. However, it is not really set up for overnighting. The open back cabin and limited storage are best suited to a fast trip out to the fishing grounds, followed by a comfortable day's fishing. The boat is dominated by the twin Yamaha F300 outboards hanging off the back. These are counter-rotating and have Yamaha digital electric steering actuators. This enables them to be controlled by the Helmmaster EX control system from Yamaha, allowing the motors to be independently steered. This allows the joystick control to be used to move the boat sideways when needed without requiring a bow thruster. These also take up less space than conventional hydraulic steering rams, leaving a very generous standing area behind each motor. The engines are also mounted on C-Star hydraulic jacking plates, enabling the height of the motors to be optimised to suit the load and conditions. In addition, a wide walkway between the motors allows for easy boarding from a marina berth, as well as being a fantastic fishing platform. All deck surfaces on the boat are covered with grey U-deck foam, making them smart, comfortable and non-slip even when wet. The main cockpit is, of course, huge thanks to the 3.1 metre beam. A fishing station has been installed in the middle of the cockpit, containing a pair of live bait tanks and a huge chili bin. Bait boards or filleting stations are located on the transom on either side, powder coated in black and white, and each with a couple of rod holders and a tackle drawer. Hatches in each gunnel provide additional storage space for fishing gear. The front of the station contains a padded double seat for fishing mates to sit on while underway. This boat is an out and out fishing machine, as evidenced by no fewer than 25 rod holders in total. 
A double row rocket launcher sits along the rear lip of the hardtop. Four rocket holders are set into each gunnel and four on the transom. There are also two ocean blue outrigger mounts on each side of the hardtop. The only thing that is arguably missing is a game chair, although there's plenty of space to fit one if required. The helm station is well equipped while remaining simple to operate, thanks to the simplified switching that has been implemented. The black box GME VHF means that all functions are available from the handset, and a fusion stereo provides your choice of music. The main display is a 16-inch Garmin with a 1 kilowatt main transducer and a 600 watt 3D transducer. The black painted railing around the side of the cabin and the bow are cleverly fastened to the outside of the hull, ensuring there's nothing on the deck to stub your toes on when you walk around. The entire hull is painted with no bare aluminium visible anywhere and is smart and well finished. Enough of what she looked like, how did she ride? With a light ship weight of 3.8 tonnes and 600 horsepower on tap, she was always going to be fast. Even running the engines just over half throttle on 3,100 RPM, we are already doing close to 20 knots while using just 50 litres per hour, or 2.5 litres per nautical mile. Pushing her to 5,000 RPM, we soon have 37 knots on the clock, and still consuming a very reasonable 3.6 litres per nautical mile. This gives the 550 litre standard fuel tank a range in excess of 200 nautical miles, and there is an option of an 800 litre tank to extend this even further. We managed to max out at 43 knots, stunning performance for a vessel this size with three passengers and a half tank of fuel. Jeremy says they switched to another prop combination a week after our test and achieved 46 and a half knots with a similarly half loaded vessel. At the cruise speed of 32 knots, the fuel consumption is 85 litres per hour, or 2.65 litres per nautical mile. Equally impressive was the ride. The impact of the dihedral foil really starts to be felt as the speed climbs above about 27 knots, and she becomes noticeably smoother at the higher speeds. This is a boat that benefits from more speed in rougher conditions, rather than by slowing down. We made turns at speeds above 30 knots, and although we all had to hold on, the ride was superbly controlled and comfortable. Going through some swells was smooth with no drama. The sharp edge of the asymmetric holes easily cut through the water, and the wing deck is high enough that the slamming down off a wave did not occur. Coming down, there was no checking motion from that foil, but equally when accelerating, there was no explicit sensation of getting up on the plane. The hull remained almost perfectly horizontal and simply lifted smoothly up as she went faster. Of course, the twin hull makes her hugely stable at rest, with no rolling or even any appreciable movement when we move from one side to another. And backing up, important for game fishing, produced no dramas, with a walkthrough high enough off the surface to prevent water ingress. The Helmmaster EX system controlling the motors has given me a serious case of steering envy. I want one for my own boat. It is very easy to use at speed, when mated with the autopilot and when coming slowly into the marina. The joystick makes docking almost child's play, eliminating any concerns with windage in a tight marina. And the touch button autopilot function is perfect for long trips out when game fishing. Overall, this is a very impressive boat, perfectly suited in this configuration to serious fishing expeditions. With that top speed, the time spent getting there can be minimized, while the autopilot makes the skipper's job somewhat simpler. The review boat was built to suit a specific purpose, but the same hull and cabin platform can easily be customised to a more family-friendly overnighter. That superb handling means that even those with tender stomachs are likely to be in untroubled, which makes a catamaran like this perfect for families. John Ackleson from Boating New Zealand. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these videos, please subscribe to our channel.